lai visa slava un gods ir mūsu varanajam dievam. Vai tu dedz? Are you burning? Tas ir labs jautājums. It's a good question. Un mēs varam tā virspusē un vieglprātīgi to atbildēt, protams, ka es dedzu. Reply, of course, nekad neaizdomāties, I'm burning, ko tad īsti nozīmē. But actually nozīmē. not really Bet, thinking what does it mean. Kā tam jāizskatās? Oh, in what Kam way it should be? Redziet, šādi jautājumi, it should, how it should look in, in reality. Vai tu dedzi? Mēs arī daudz vēl tādus redzam. In Bible, we can Vienreiz see many Pēterim, places in Bible like that. Jautājumu, to Once Jesus pat, asked to Peter, vai tu mīli mani? Do you love me? And Peter, even not thinking, answered, You know, I love you, I love you. But Jesus tried to show him that he is waiting, expected from him, not just words, not just words. That's why he said to him, Show that. If you, show, if you choose to love me, show me this. Take care of my sheep. Continue the mission I started. I was the example for you. And I liked I liked the example that awakening, awakening is uh, returning, returning to the normal Christianity. Atmoda notiek, ka Dieva ļaudis atgriežās pie tā, kā stāv rakstīts. Kad mēs ticam tam, ko Bībala saka, kāds Dievs ir, un uz ko viņš ir spējīgs, un ko viņš jau ir paveicis. When we are just returning to his word, say what he has done. Atmoda notiek, kad mēs sākam dzīvot saskaņā ar Dievu vārdu, un nevis šī laika. Atmoda notiek, kad mēs sākam dzīvot saskaņā ar Dievu vārdu, un nevis šī laika. Atmoda notiek, kad mēs sākam dzīvot saskaņā ar Dievu vārdu, un nevis šī laika. Atmoda notiek, kad mēs sākam dzīvot saskaņā ar Dievu vārdu, un nevis šī laika. Atmoda notiek, kad mēs sākam dzīvot saskaņā ar Dievu vārdu, un nevis šī laika. Atmoda notiek, kad mēs sākam dzīvot saskaņā ar Dievu And I will live like that, not to live in accordance to order in this life, in this world. It's the order when a wife listening and obeying her husband. It's when parents obeying and in fear of God. Awakening happening when we are acting in accordance with the word of God. You remember, awakening, it's not our will. There are so many people outside church who need radical meeting with Christ. In the church, pre-covest, it's not something, believing, it's not something we heard about, but we have personal promises about our nation, about our people around us. We will have more than 30 years to shine we were shining for that time, and we need to pray harder for awakening, not only in church, but also in the whole nation. And it's our personal responsibility. Yesterday, I was reading about Corneli. He was man in Italy, our Italian like, army. He took all, all family, he gathered all family friends, not to celebrate life, but to invite the man of God to, to preach event, to good news, and they received Holy Spirit, and they got saved. He was ready to do everything, to surrender, to see people near him saved. He went to this man who served God and he said, he invited, come to my family. Why not to do in this way? To speak to your uh, neighbors, colleagues, uh, family, so they can clearly hear. We 
need to shine during these times. We need awakening. One of the keys to see awakening uh, that was described in the Bible. Uh, Awakening is prayer. Awakening. And Gipe last Sunday spoke about this. If we will not, if I'm not praying about awakening, there is no this uh, life power to move the sheep. We cannot, we cannot lose prayers, pr prayers on our knees about people near us. Maybe within us there is someone who doesn't know how to pray for awakening about a uh, neighbor, how to pray in a biblical way. I would like to give you a few instruments in a Roman town. We can see, first of all, you need to pray for your heart. You need to have thirstness, to be thirsty for awakening. You need to pray for your heart and say something not right about in my heart. I don't have this will to pray for people around me. I have stiff heart. Help me to see needs of other people in uh, Acts 27. We need to pray for darkened hearts with open eyes. We need to stay in prayer for our colleagues, our friends. If we pray in the spiritual world, something changing. If we pray for nation, people in our hearts, something in spiritual world, this spiritual land is changing and it's bringing fruit. One of things as a family. Every evening we are doing for a long time, we are praying. Jesus said, knock and the door will be opened. And the Bible speaking about open spiritual doors. We are praying for spiritual doors of being opened. We are praying for people outside church. And sometimes we don't see and see these people in uh, training, in schools, in kindergarten. Father, we are praying for the open doors to, so we can be the light of this world, the soul. And there are results. And we are seeing these results more and more in the places we never had idea we could serve, but we are seeing the open doors so we can be the salt of the land. Another thing I would like to encourage you to do, it's what Jesus told. Uh, <laughs> we are praying, we are praying for God to see the workers, the workers to collect this fruit, to collect. So Lord, harvest workers will send harvest workers. Maybe there are people you're praying for a long time and you do not see results. Please pray to God. Please send harvest workers who will uh, bring these people to God. Don't be afraid to pray. Prayer is a key to awakening. From all our hearts, we would like to see awakening. And we think some results. Matthew 18, Jesus is sharing interesting statements. If two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If two of you on earth in the same mind, 
mind. So they should be two. They should be on the earth and they should be in the same mind to pray. This month we are concentrating on family. We would like celebrate family, marriage, children and to share practical advices from um, Word of God that will be blessing. But I would like to look wider our family. We have brothers, sisters, we have church that is our spiritual family and in Bible teaching that it is more important than their physical family actually. In all these fields we, ha we are challenged. In all these relationship fields we have problems where we need the wisdom of God and His and you know the promises are powerful in every field. We can speak about church, about services, things that are in your heart, to serve children, cafe, in city, many, many things where just physical way without his blessing and uh, leading we cannot see miracles maybe we have parents here who despite the experience you have you need his leading you need his guidance inherit we need people to inherit um, internal life and to serve God this is the greatest wealth we can speak about those different relationship fields. And God saying, you don't have because you're not asking. Sometimes Christians are not successful in something. You want to be to live in fear of God, to be a bank. But you're not praying, that's why you don't have. There are Christians who are praying, but they are asking, for, for evil, because they have evil hearts, for their will. It's not just about prayer, it's about praying in accordance to the Word of God. And the word is continuing, where two or three in my name, there I am. If we're speaking about marriage, where two or three in my name. So it's 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 opening this this idea continuing. Maybe it's not about your partner, about your smaller group, about your family, wider family, friends, maybe it's about your city. If you need help from God in some uh, fields. God gave you this promise where his disciples in Bible the gathering gathering two by two or three there is exactly the same idea they were gathering together in name of God maybe they put aside some things, questions, problems where they didn't have same opinion but they were coming together in name of God and the, and the Spirit of God came upon on them and the awakening was started, has started and it was influencing all the whole world. First John John referring uh, first John 5 he is referring referring to the same idea uh, if we ask anything according to his will he hears us prayer is very important of course it's not just about it's not just about about requiring from God, asking from God, but of course it just it's a part of prayer. 
But that's because much it's really interesting. Abba she's very interesting. Both these verses. What is uh, what wrote John Matthew about Jesus' words? All these ideas. In, uh, in a context of relationship context, we can speak about healing, miracles, signs. In both cases, this prayer is given to us in a context of relationship. In one place it said, if your brother is sinning and you spoke to him and he returned and he... Um, in other place it said, how many times you need to forgive someone. And some people so offended, this easily, offended so easily that even if you give them wrong look, they can leave the church. And Jesus answering, doesn't matter how many times you have to, uh, to forgive, but you should learn how to leave his heart that is impossible to um, offend that doesn't matter what will happen to you. You even do not need to forgive because your heart cannot be offended. Both times. Both times when Jesus speaking about prayer, it's put in a context, an idea of relationship. I know, I know that there are people living very far away and you cannot have this communion. And of course you have this uh, opportunity to use Zoom, to, to, to join. A smaller groups. God put us in this relationship. And it, there, there is this chalk. If you don't like people on land, in heaven there will, there will be even more people. We will be more fanatic. We will be more enthusiastic. We will have more relationship, more communion between our, us. So learn now how to live together. Uh, Acts 2, verse 43, everyone was filled with awe at many wondrous signs performed by the apostles. This place showing, showing the word awe F, or fear, fear is the same word is used uh, for wife in accordance to show respect to her husband, but actually it's kind of fear, but godly fear. Everyone was taken by the fear, and this created atmosphere where wonders and signs could happen. It's respect one to another, it's respect to God, fear. They had at that time the church leaders and this fear, respect, helped miracles and wonders to happen. In the verse 26, we see that they continued to meet together in temples and they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere heart. Second thing I noticed, what is taking place, they have same mind. Imagine if we would come here daily and day by day, week by week, they became, they had the same mind. And this awakening to continue, they needed one another. I would like today to share the word I received exactly for you from God and the title is uh, so this home or house would stand. Mm -hmm. 
Un viss šīs lietas, par kurām mēs runāsim, būs noderīgas priekš ģimenes un laulības. All things we will discuss today will be good, will be important for family or church or your marriage. Lai draudze pastāvētu, lai ģimene pastāvētu, lai laulība pastāvētu. So the church is sustainable, so it can sustain. Ja tās lietas tam nesais, ieliec tur savu draugu, savu draugu loku. If these topics doesn't touch you, not important to you, put other, something else that you your friends, your friendship, some people around you, you know. You should be. Šodien es gribētu uzrunāt tos, kas varbūt jūs domājat, mēs esam ģimenes mēris jau nākamajā nedēļā, mēs svinēsim visi ģimenes dienu. Next week, we will celebrate family day, our church's family. Maybe some people are maybe worried, maybe you don't have marriage family. Paul, if he will be here today, he will say, be happy, be happy that you don't have this yoke and you can serve God in full power. On this time, maybe to make uh, your family happy, you can spend to serve God. Please reach people, give your, God, give your life as good as Tu esi svētīts. Give to God. Sacrifice. But that's a biblis. You are blessed. Maybe it didn't really sound so happy or enthusiastic, but it's based on Bible. Today, I would like to pay attention to these two things in accordance to House of God. Ja mēs domājam par namu, kurš varētu tikt būvēts, un pieņemsim, ka tur tiek izmantoti piedzeļi un cements, vai kāds saistīja, tad, lai šis namas varētu būvēt, tur esmu kopā, tad šīs abas ir ārkārtīgi svarīgas. Un es ticu, ka mums vajag par to padomāt. We need to think about these two topics to strengthen our church and our personal lives. First of all, it's a, it's respect between one another, and this is as a concrete. Bible pavisam skaidri un kategoriski apgalvo, ka viss gods, visi slavi ir tikai vienu Bible clearly saying all glory and honor belongs to God. Maybe some worshiper doing great job, a musician, and all glory we, go, we give to God. As he created that perfect, this nice person, and he let us create the instruments. All glory and honor to God. Visu godu un slavu arī pieņem sev, un ar nevienu viņš to nedalīs. Also, he's taken all glory. And he's saying, we not only, we should not only respect God, but also respect one another. Once I saw illustration, there was a note with a written mark 50 euros. It can be new, this uh, note, it can be dirty. But because it's written 50 euros and has this value sign 50, we are valuing this in this amount. Doesn't matter appearance. The value of this doesn't change. And then God created human. He created it in a self-image. And God, looking at brother or sister, you don't like me, but the church, and he's thinking, she or he is beautiful, he is worthy. I created him or her similar to me. Interesting. In church, uh, between churches, in, uh, sometimes we don't understand people. Maybe, maybe they're 
kur pats Dievs nav uzskatījis to par pazemojumu, saugšos par saviem bērniem un iemājot viņos. But Maybe there is arrogance that we allow and we are not respecting people to be respect, respect and honor. In my backpack, I have John Beer book, and we read this book in smaller groups and as a church. It's amazing how much Bible speaking about Christian life and your attitude and relationship between people. Let's think about our church, the work God doing here. What's happening if we're losing obedience, fear of God, we're not respecting church? God, can God uh, work? In these obstacles, it's a question we need to ask ourselves. If we surrender ourselves to Him, we should surrender to His commandments, to His word. If we listen to Him, it will bring uh, uh, many fruits. If you don't, don't say you love God, if you don't love people around you, Let's look at the verse where Bible speaking about relationship in family and maybe I, I could give you a few advices. I hope it will be blessing for everyone who listens. Of course, we will look into the Word of God and looking into all relationship advices Paul giving to us important. In every aspect, he's speaking about respect, actually. This respect we're showing should spread. Sometimes this respect is shown, should be shown in different way because we are seeing respect in different ways. But it's all about respect. Let's start with Ephesians and we'll start with wives. It's always easier to say the, the, in what way the wife should behave. Paul, in this case, he's really neutral because he never had as a wife. He, he's neutral in this position. Uh, about wives. Holy Spirit teaching us, wives, submit yourself to your obey, let's say obey yourself to your husbands as you do to Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife and Christ is the head of the church, his body which he is the Savior. Paul speaking about wife and your husband doesn't matter doesn't matter in which way you would like to explain this word but he's speaking about wife that is married to to particular husband my wife doesn't need to obey any, any other husband but me because she is given to me by God the wife should submit, should have fear. Wives, you should submit yourself exactly to your husband. But if you go deeper in the teaching of God, we will see something surprising. Not only wife asked to submit to husband, but also husband should submit to his wife. We should submit, respect one another, say one another, verse 21. 
One thing I would like to, to, to say about this meeting. First of all, in the case of marriage, it should be in free will. All wives say uh, in a free will. It means even if you marry to your wife, you cannot uh, make your against her will to obey you. It's her free will, free choice. There are some obstacle situations. She's as a wife, she's ready to submit to you as a husband. Second, submitting not always the same as obeying. Actually, the right word would be submit, because listening to obeying and submitting different things kuras ir pretēji dievi šajai gribai, tad tev kā sievai esot padevīgai savam vīram, un tomēr ne paklausīgai savam vīram tev būtu jāklaus savam patiesajam vīram. If the husband wants to do what something that is only when it's in accordance to the word of God, you should submit and obey. You wives, of course, know, but maybe husbands doesn't know. When you were just uh, meeting each other before marriage, maybe she doesn't know the way you are, actually. Maybe she doesn't know that you are sweating. Maybe she, Maybe she does, didn't know that you sometimes you're forgetting something, that you are not so... Um, there are many things why see husbands losing their passions, not making right decisions, maybe sometimes too emotional, losing patience, and you see this everything, and it's so difficult to to keep, to protect this submitting, obeying. So, take decision, make a decision to build this respect for your husband and some advices. How you can do it? First of all, uh, allow sometimes to make mistakes for husbands. Of course, you know the best way to do everything. Sometimes just allow husband make mistake, allow him to be this leader, trust him. Why I want to say this? Because sometimes in there are moments that your husband should make decisions, be the decision maker, and if you take it away from him this uh, role, he will never learn, and this role for him might be uh, not known, never, never make him do things faster. Don't push him. Don't push him. Sometimes maybe you're too annoying and maybe you think and you're stimulating him. But it's, it's not right. All men said a man very, very quietly. You know what helps? 
rice, rice, your Piemēram, husbands. Lietas, kas vēl nav Maybe kuras gribētu, lai viņš izdara. some Tā things vietā, nu, didn't beidzot, happen. You would like him to lietas. do. And do oh, not viss. say, why are you never Tās doing this? Kaisot, when you will do it? Es katrai zeigarā man liekas, o, kāds man vīrs, kā tu tik grozīgs esi. Just take one example and use it. Say, meitas toreiz skatījās, kā tu, kā tu Say, oh, what a beautiful wardrobe you installed. Oh, our daughters love it. And they look into the mirror and they look at you, the way you built it, and they fell in love with you even more. And you know, in this way, your husband will be raised. And third, pray for your husband. Pray for your husband. It happened. He's not in the way you asked your husband. <laughs> pray, pray for him and bless him. Uh, pray for works. For God's works in his life and bless. Maybe some wives could say, husband is coming to church, but not doing anything according to the word of God. Bez mācīšanas ar savu dzīvi, bez sludināšanas ar savu dzīvi uh, uh, un ar savu dievbīgo dzīvi tāda diamantošos vīrus un iegūtšos vīrus. Uh, word of God vīrus, saying, even if you have a godly husband nebāc, with nebāc, your life and with your service and obeying to God, he will be uh, made holy, he will be blessed. Ok, we, we finished with wives, now we'll speak to husbands. Tas tikai tas, ko Bībala saka. Tātad vīriešiem ir uh, vīriem, tātad 5. nodļā 25. pantā ir rakstīts, un atkal šeit mēs varam saprast, ka uh, ir par cieņu, cienu šo sievu. Verse 25. Vīri mīliet savas sievas, tāpat kā Kristus ir mīlējis savu draudzi, pats nododamies viņas labā, lai to darītu svētu, šķīsot ar mazgāšanu ūdenī cauri. Vārdu, Husbands, vārdu, it's the same Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, uh, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Amen. How many husbands can say, I love my wife? What he's trying to say, respect, respect this life partner you have, love your wife. When sometimes it seems to us that our partner should know it, but just like that. Visu sevi, lai palīdzētu, lai svētītu otru cilvēku, un šī ir tā aina, kur mums Pāvils iedod. Viņš saka, mīliet savu sievas, bet tā kā Kristus ir mīlējis draudz, ko Kristus izdarīja? Viņš izpakšoja sevi no visa dieva, viņš pārzamojās, kūdam pat zemāks, pat cilvēku, līdz krusta nāvē, viņš kalpoja, viņš pārzamojās, viņš pietur, viņš darīja pilnīgi savu laumā to draudzeni. He served. He was humbling himself to the church. We shouldn't be so, we cannot be so tired to take care of needs of our wife, of a wife and our children. To show her love in the way she understands. And let's look at Salman. Let's uh, see Proverbs 31, 31 Proverbs. If you have fearful la wife, you are really blessed. Okay, uh, okay. okay, let's go to children. How? How can we love our children? Don't be very strict. They're very thin vessels. 
Don't be too strict. Maybe you saw cowboy. Films. And maybe you think if you will be very strict and not gentle, you will be cool. But not your wife will love you more and children. If you will be gentle, she should feel as this flower. Second, please uh, value your wife, say you're beautiful, you're wonderful, say thanks for what she done, find these opportunities to say about your love and how grateful you are. I know we all have these profiles, accounts, we are following on Instagram or other social media. And you are so, so um, in awe about other women who are doing work or so something on Instagram. But you should look actually at your wife and be inspired by what she is doing. Be excited about things she has done. If you are not inspired, read song of songs and don't and don't use uh, exact words written there third advice you can raise your wives with your words and your works Sometimes the marriages are at the lowest point, uh, coming to divorce, uh, husbands not happy with their wives, with their character, works, uh, they're annoyed by everything. And do you know what is the truth? The truth is, if she's like that, this husband is responsible for her behavior. Ļoti iespējams. Very, Ļoti iespējams. Very possible. Jo, ja tu paņem skaistu, if you took beautiful flower from the garden and you said, this flower is mine, and you put all the dirt on this flower, and this flower is dying, it's not the same flower anymore. It's your fault. You are a Ja foolish gardener. If you like that, no, please leave no, all no. flowers no. in gardens. Don't Tev touch this. You have a no, wife. No. Take care of your no, wife. No. Uh, uh, raise her with your words. She's a flower. And you will become closer one another. Vēl pēdējā lieta varbūt par šo pakļaušanos un vīrs kā ģimenes galvu. Es ticu, ka Bībeles ģimenē tām attiecībām būtu sekojuši, ka ir lietas, kur mēs pieņemam lēmumus, bet mums būtu jāpieņem to kopā, padodoties Dievu vārdam un arī padodoties un ievērojot arī citam citu vajadzības. We need to make decision sometimes, but in accordance to the word of God. And there are important decisions in the family. And sometimes there are situations when we are not united in the way to act. So, so if the <laughs> husband head of uh, the family, okay. he is bearing the results uh, of, of this, his decisions. So about children, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Parents, uh, children, obey because this is right. It says... First commandment, honor your father and mother. Children, obey your parents. It's really surprising. Maybe uh, let children uh, bring them up themselves. No, no, it's not the right way. One of the most important responsibilities of children is to listen to their parents. One another, another interesting thing. In the Bible, Nova said, children, 
children should love their parents, but they should obey and listen to their parents. We very often want children to love us, but they don't really think and respect in listening. It's important to think about that. And some advices for those who are having children. How can we this respect um, achieve? Vai mana bērna, kad klausās, tas ir veids, kā var izrādīt cieņu pieaugušam cilvēkam, viņš runā, tad tu neesi tavā ierīcē, vai neskrēd apkārt, 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 neskrēd Third, uh, say thankfulness, be grateful, you should teach children to be grateful, it's not coming naturally, you should teach this to your children. Mark, book of Mark saying, uh, chapter 7, verse 9, you you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor father and mother, and anyone who curses the father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that that might have been used to help their father or mother is corrupt, that is devoted to God, that you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Listen, Jesus saying, Bible saying clearly. How to act? How to act in a biblical uh, way? We are not speaking about uh, uh, putting to death by stones. By throwing stones. But, but we are speaking, not taking very modern advices about, like sometimes there are books released on bringing up. We have, we have principles of God uh, how to teach your children and let's use this. And last but not least, and also sad to parents, do, fathers do not separate your children, instead bring them up in the training instruction of Lord. If you are annoyed by your children, you're teaching them to be annoyed. They do not know the borders. They do not know that they should live in peace and patience. It says, instead bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. It's your task as father mother to teach, to honor mother and father. School will not teach this. Sunday school teachers, please teach children to honor teachers. It's your responsibility. Parents, it's our responsibility. And I know some people might say, oh, you have so small children, what do you know? I'm saying what Bible teaching us. It's Bible teaching us. How can we do it in the best way? Maybe fathers have some advices. Put some uh, clear rules at your home. Not like, not, not, do not follow your children uh, any, every step and saying, don't do it, do not touch this. But give them freedom and have rules. 
Es uzticēju konstants, es jau par to teicu, tā be constant, tas, kur, ja be trustworthy. If you say and promise you do, if you have borders, obey these borders and the third, you should be the stronghold. You should be this mountain, the cliff of peace. I hope Holy Spirit gives you a power to be shelter of peace for your child. Very often, it's the most important to be on your knees and to hug your child from where he could receive the peace from you, from you. You show how to um, go through these emotions. Do not spoil your children, but bring them in love and abyss. Romans 12 is written, understand, be devoted to one another in love. Honor, honor one another above yourself. It's not speaking just about family relationship, but also about church, one of the keys for us to live in a, in a truly godly way. How many of us need a awakening in our family, in our, uh, with, uh, our parents need to be saved? We have many problems in our family and we continue living like we do not have this pain in our heart and asking church leaders, but ask church leaders to pray, to pray for your children, parents and stand and uh, pray one for another and serve to one another. Very, uh, it's very easy to serve, to, uh, to follow some Instagram um, servants of God. And we're really honoring them and respecting them, but sometimes you're not honoring your own family. It should not characterize our church. So this is concrete. So what are the bricks? It's being united, being in the same mind. In, uh, so we are able to put aside smaller things and think about things that actually making us united and it's coming from really um, humble heart. I'm reading book about being humble now. If you do not pay attention to being humble, it's actually the way Jesus showing us how to be a Christian. Humbleness is uh, leading to respect. If you humble, it's not difficult for you to be respectful. In a world, only the one who drives good car and have many followers is uh, worth the respect. Do not be um, affected by the wealth and uh, maybe some popularity of some church members do not pay uh, bigger attention to them. We all children of God and we all have our services to God. Mark 7. Oh, sorry, Mark 3, uh, 25. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. This house cannot stand. If house divided, it speaks about your friends also. If someone will bring um, 
ka tur nebūs šīta viena prātība. Worldly things, practices in your family, in church, it will not stand. What happened to marriage that cannot be, where partners cannot be united? What happens to parents that are not united, where one parent is alving? things to do to child and other not. In this case, children learn how to manipulate and sometimes they can be really afraid with the other parent. If house divided against itself, that house can stand. We would like not only church, but also families stand. Let's, until the end, and I would like to finish with chapter 4 Ephesians. And Paul giving us illustration how to be united. As, as Greeks, how, how it's working and how it should look in a church and in a marriage. He's saying, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live um, a life worth of the calling. You need to um, live worthy of calling. You need to respect your calling. You need to respect the gift God gave to you. How you can serve the church. Don't uh, leave it uh, at the outskirts of your life. Please honor your calling God gave you. He continuing. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Listen, verse 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Every effort of the Spirit Every effort to be really, uh, make really huge effort to be united, to be united. We should uh, make effort, each of us, we need to take part, not just some people. And I would like highlight, protect, protect this unity in spirit, in spirit. And he's saying in verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, then you were called. I need to... We have smaller groups. Sometimes we are saying, even if if not the smaller groups or church, nothing in common we have. It's not that only church uniting us, but there is something more important that uniting us. It's calling, it's calling, it's uh, hope. And we can speak about our aims and plans, about our dreams. So many different plans and dreams we can have, but what is uh, uniting us, our calling, uh, and hope for salvation, we all waiting, Jesus showing his um, glory coming for second time. We have so much uniting us. One flesh, one spirit, we are. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over, all over, and through all and in all. Look what is uniting us. 
rajonā un eit vienā grupiņā un ne jau šatnācās vienu draudzi. Not only vienu draudzi. that you ne, 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 ne. are in viena this region, viesa, viens gārs, in viens kungs, viena ticība, viena kristība, viens dievs, viens tāvs, visiem, kas ir pāris, visiem un visiem, no, visiem, 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 visiem. No, one Lord, Lūko, one faith, one, one baptism, pateik. one God, one Holy Spirit, Father of all. Jēzus mūs neaicina Jesus tā. not asking us to try living like we are united. Bible saying we are one. We just need to live like that. We should stop being divided. We should not allow people from outside divide us. But we should be united in the same mindset as children of God. Simply, let's live like that. And how to make these bricks of uniteness be together by concrete, by concrete of respect. I would like to uh, speak about one thing. Uh, Nesen, uh, not long ago, I uh, completed my training for uh, ride to drive motorcycle. Un tad kad es biju dabojis uh, motociklu tiesī tiesības, then I received these documents. Tikai kad ļoti brīnišķīga ģimene šeit draudzē, kas teic, "Hei, mēs gribam tev svētīt ar motociklu." who decided to bless me with a motorcycle and I said, "No, no, I am very humble. I cannot do. I cannot take it." But then I I agreed. I said, "Okay, Father, I'm thankful." And I received this blessing and I noticed I noticed one interesting thing. When you draw then riding a motorcycle and like you on the streets on in Riga and then you have uh, other cyclists uh, approaching you they welcoming you and they have different signs sometimes putting your hand down up or waving if you just received your rights to drive you for sure you will be waving your hand. Un, uh, so I started to write and I was so excited that people welcoming me. If you have a motorola, you don't do not welcoming other people because it's only for uh, the ones who having motorcycles. It's so cool. And I'm uh, riding and uh, I am welcoming one uh, 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 other cyclist. And after a few seasons, and I was annoyed actually then by this welcoming. And I thought, what I'm welcoming, why I'm doing this, and you know what is really uh, strange, when you're stopping on the crossroad and there are lights. And he said, okay, I'm going to go to the crossroad. And he said, okay, I'm going to go to the crossroad. And uh, he's trying to uh, like give you this welcoming with a fist, and you are not as tall as Alexander, and you cannot even reach. And it's really strange, actually. So a few months ago, and I saw on YouTube a video about uh, accidents motorci motorcyclists had, uh, like such an inspiration be before new season. As I was looking, every time there was an accident, this were the recyclists who were uh, riding together with this person or other persons in, in uh, the 
on, on the roads who were stopping. And I thought maybe actually it's I need to welcome other riders. It's similar as in life of Christians. We would like to run after after uh, awakening. Guy and Pe uh, compare this to a, a animals uh, in nature never seen. Sometimes people are annoyed by cyclists, motorcycle, and uh, they don't know how uh, fragile our souls are. How easily we are offended. So two things I understood. What I learned in this season. Those who are having more accidents are those who are very. Um, Recklessly, um, their attitude is reckless, very arrogant to, to, to driving and to people around them. They think they're really experienced. And I thought about this mo mo motorcycle. Um, riders. And then I thought about myself. Very often there are drivers actually in cars, they are so annoyed by motorcycles and they are really annoyed and they have this large car and they can behave aggressively. But I know if the other rider, motorcyclist, I feel uh, more um, safe. And now, since then, I started to welcome other motorcyclists. I know I, I need to take care for those people, and they actually will take care for me. It's the same as in church, where we are. It's respect for uh, God's standards. We should respect one another. And I think it's so great when we are learning how to be united and to say hi and welcome. When I know when everything is fine and I don't even need this. And but if something will happen, I know there is this brother or sister, and they will know, they will know, do not remove their, do not remove. Helmet, do not remove the helmet, do not touch, but call ambulance. It's the same in church. Let's be united. Let's obey and respect one another. Do not be annoyed 